Welcome to the Reader Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. I'm your host, Corey Graham. Join us here every Friday night at 8 p.m. or listen anytime via podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, to name just a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where the independent new authors come first. It's a traumatic story taken from real life. It's the new book by Kim Falia, titled Unrevealed Promise, Devoted, Pure, Unconditional Love of a Mother, A Semblance of Agape Love of Christ. I'm very happy that Kim is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Kim, thank you so much for being here with me. And thank you for asking me. Thanks. Absolutely. Can you tell me about Unrevealed Promise? Yeah, just like your introduction stated, it's a book about unconditional love where we sacrifice ourselves for another person. Hmm. The book tells a true life event that was a difficult time. I was once married to a multimillionaire individual guy that lived in the panhandle of Texas. And we had to go, my daughter and I had to go into hiding to protect her. The legal system would not protect us. So the book is about God's protection during that event and making himself evident and aware and just providing me a lot of peace and Bible verses like would come to mind during this event. Like I mentioned, we were in hiding. So we were in cheap hotels and here and there. It was very dramatic. It was very hard, like on my body. Hmm. But during it, I also had a great sense of peace that can only come from God. Wow. What an amazing story. Is there anything in particular that inspired you to write your story and tell it to the world? You know, to be honest, Corey, I really didn't want to write it. I'm not a writer, (laughs) but it's just to honor God. Hmm. You know, we kind of do our lives and we go day to day in our lives and we don't really recognize his presence in it often. Hmm. So sometimes when you're going through things, it changed my life. This event changed my life and my perception of God. And now I'm a counselor and it It even changed and influences the way I counsel, which has been very impactful for a lot of other individuals. Hmm. I really appreciate you taking the traumatic things that you've lived through and using that story to glorify God and and to help other people. You know, there are a lot of people going to be reading this and, and getting a lot out of it, and their lives are going to be changed through it. Thank you. I'm just a mere wee little vessel. I don't even know. I just, I'm minute. Hmm. It's God's power and his peace and mainly, mainly his love. And in America, I don't think we really, we think about love like, woo woo, I love you. It feels so good. You know, the romantic Eros love. And we don't think about many other loves that are out there, like a familial storge love and a phileo philia, not like my last name, brotherly love. And then of course, agape love. We often don't recognize all these other loves. And I often work with children and they kind of laugh. Hee, hee, hee. You know, if you're a friend and you care about somebody, you're actually showing them love. Hmm. This is your first book, your first time publishing. I'm sure you learned a lot. The publishing process can be quite trying and requires a bit of patience. So what was the most challenging part of publishing this? Being vulnerable. <laughs> the publishing process, now they were really nice. Christian Face Publishing has done a great job. They were nice. They walked me through it. You know, I don't have to know anything to publish a book. It's just being vulnerable, telling a personal story to the world. That was tough. I wrestled with that. This book is called Unrevealed Promise, Devoted, Pure, Unconditional Love of a Mother, a Semblance of Agape Love of Christ written by Kim Falia and published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can get this everywhere you pick up your reading material. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. Well, Kim, thank you again for joining me tonight. I had a really nice time talking with you. Great. Thank you so much. The Road to Hand Curled is the new book of imaginative tales by author John Zagers. I'm really happy that John is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. John, thank you for joining me tonight. Great to be here, Corey. 
The Road to Hien Curled is certainly a lot of creative things in this book. Can you tell me what readers could expect? They can expect something different. It starts out in the land of uh, Mordoray, he and Curl being part of that other world. So it starts out in kind of an other world. It's a rather medieval type world. Then the second part of the book, which is a longer section, takes off into more earthbound tales. And so there's a great variety. There's like adventures. There's a, an epic uh, battle tale. Some of it is just plain silly because people need to laugh. And people, I think, discount that. But it, I, it's a very human need just to laugh and be silly. So they'll encounter that. They'll encounter serious kind of spiritual insights. Part of it is just fantasy. And part of it is uh, taken from my own experiences and that of my family. Because I come from a family of storytellers. Mm. And so I've got a richness of stories from my family, from myself, and then from my own imagination. Oh, you certainly sound like a creative guy. Did this take you a long time to write? Well, it, it's been a work of about 50 years. I started mm-hmm. writing when I was about 18, and I'm 69 now. And what I did is I kind of divided them up thematically. And so what happens is that then I added some new poems that would fit the, you know, the current themes. But probably in another two or three months, I will probably submit for the process, you know, a second volume, which again takes in basically the same time, but just kind of different themes along that same timeline. So is this the first time you've been published then? First time. First time, and I'm learning a lot. (laughs) Oh, I'm sure. Congratulations. There's a lot that goes into it. What kinds of things did you learn along the way? Well, I learned to kind of uh, relax, not to be... I was very conscious of editing and wanting everything to be perfect. But, you know, I know my publisher, Christian Faith Publishing, is so helpful. And so I've learned to kind of, okay, take it easy, get everything in as pure as you can, and they'll take care of what I'm not good at. And Mm. that's been a very valuable lesson for me to kind of learn. And my next time going through, I'll be able to get things published a lot faster because I won't make a lot of the, you know, the initial mistakes a new person does. Hmm. They said the next time around, I like the sound of that. So you have more books in the works? One more for sure. I hope to, but like I said, I'm already 69 years old. I'm starting to get kind of tired, so we'll see. You're still young. I hope so. (laughs) I hope so. I'm young at heart. Uh, And this is the fulfillment of a lifetime's dream. I have always, always wanted to get published. It's uh, been an ache inside of my heart. And to be at the point where I can share my books with other people, people who've been pulling for me, people I love and care about, is just a fantastic joy. Mm. The book is called The Road to He Uncurled, written by John Zagers and published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this everywhere that you buy your reading material on Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, iTunes, traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. John, thank you very much for joining me here tonight. I had a fantastic time talking with you. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you so much for this opportunity to share my heart with you. In her new book, Caroline Kanine looks to help mothers with an often frustrating area when caring for babies. It's titled Latching Well, Breastfeeding with an Integrative Approach. I'm really happy that Caroline is here with me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Caroline, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Corey. I'm thrilled to be able to talk about the book and to speak with you and listeners about it today. I'm thrilled to have you here. Now, when it comes to breastfeeding, you certainly are an expert. You are specifically qualified to be talking about this. Well, thank you. It's really been my life's work professionally to integrate my professions as a nurse practitioner, a registered dietitian, and a lactation consultant all together to be able to just work with new mothers and families. And it's really been a privilege being able to help thousands of families learn to breastfeed and get started with their parenting journey. I love to teach, to write, and to work with new moms. So this book really embodied my favorite things that I feel like I was meant to do, at least professionally. Mm. Now, when it comes to breastfeeding, what inspired you to write about it and put this book out? 
Well, breastfeeding is a natural process. It really is natural, but the challenge is it doesn't come naturally. Mm. And so many mothers have wonderful intentions. Most mothers actually want to breastfeed and most mothers start breastfeeding, but we lose a lot of moms along the way due to struggles. And most moms also are completely aware of all the amazing benefits of breastfeeding, that they build the immune system, it's wonderful for bonding. Moms learn that the benefits of breastfeeding are cumulative and dose-related, so any amount of feeding she does is great. So even breastfeeding for three weeks is better than three days, three months better than three weeks, and so on. So we know that these challenges exist, and we also know that mothers that receive support and encouragement through the process and get the help that they need are more likely to succeed. Mm. And that's really what this book is about. And probably that seed was planted years ago when I had my own initial little challenging experience where I felt lost without a lot of support. And I Mm. kind of allude to that a little bit in my prologue. And then the book carries on and works toward helping other families. Mm. Now, there's a lot in this book, very detailed information, but at the same time, it's it's fairly easy for the layperson to understand. So you've put a lot in here. So can you tell us a little bit about what readers can expect when they dive in and open the book? Sure. So the main event of the book really is to teach how to latch using creative and effective techniques. And the goal is to gently guide each mother through her breastfeeding journey in that process. So that is the centerpiece of the book is really teaching her how to latch and how to get started. That's the most important time. Yet the book is written with a holistic perspective so that Many of the issues that mothers are encountering in the first year of life that will support that good latch and getting started with breastfeeding are discussed. Things like skin-to-skin care, that golden hour after breastfeeding, issues such as soothing the fussy baby, dealing with sleep issues. This is a huge one. How is baby sleep integrated into breastfeeding? And then there's a section on growth and development. A lot of that is covered throughout the book, actually, where, in other words, breastfeeding a six-month-old baby, there are definitely different issues and different feeding patterns than breastfeeding a two-month-old baby. So the book addresses those issues. And even as babies are introduced to solid foods, that's a whole nother issue and how the breastfeeding works into that process. And then some of the issues related to mom, if she's returning to employment outside the home, if she decides to wean, if she is having challenges, there are some, sometimes with breastfeeding, there are some challenges to be overcome. And sometimes those issues are with the baby and sometimes they're with mom and sometimes they're with both of them. The book does have a section for moms to refer to if they're struggling with certain issues. And basically, the book is written in a format where these concepts are relayed through images, a lot of photos with positions and things like that, vignettes, so mothers' personal stories of things that have actually happened, and some nice key point and recommendation summaries. And then there's a really complete section of question and answers that mothers ask. And these are questions that moms sometimes don't know who to ask the questions to and where to get the answer in a timely way. So a lot of these questions that I've heard over the years in a mom and baby group that I've led has really led me to be able to ideally key into these points. And each mother is then empowered with her own strategy for breastfeeding success Mm -hmm. that works for her situation. The book is called Latching Well. Breastfeeding with an Integrative Approach. It's written by Caroline Kaneen and published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this everywhere you pick up your books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. And Caroline, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for your hard work on this very, very important topic. I hope we can do this again soon. Thank you so much, Corey. I really appreciate your time, and I'm hoping that the book will help a lot of new families get off to a great start. Self-sabotage can be difficult to come to terms with, and author Princess James encourages readers because of her own life struggles in her new book, The Void You Feel, Only God Can Fill. I'm really happy that Princess is here with me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Princess, thank you for being here with me tonight. 
And thank you so much for having me. Could you tell me what readers can expect in The Void You Feel? I would definitely say you can expect for me to go deep into several of my relationships where I feel that the other person may have did something to me or have taken advantage of me. But then you'll see that I start taking accountability for my actions, the things that I've allowed, and the dysfunctional patterns that I continued in each and every relationship. Mm. I'm sure this book took a lot of courage to write. What inspired you to tell this story to the world? So in 2019, I felt as if I had hit rock bottom. Mm. I had done everything possible to get someone to love me, only to find out that they were dating several other people. And I felt really low. I battled with depression at the time. And once I overcame it, I was like, I didn't want anyone else to go through what I went through. And I didn't want them to feel as if they were alone. Mm. So in a way, other women inspired me because I wanted to help them the way that I couldn't help myself. How do you feel now being a published author with your first one out? Sometimes it still feels surreal. You know, it feels as if, oh, my God, I can't believe I did it. You know, there was a time when I was like, I was going to do it. And now that it's, I have the book physically, it's just a great feeling. So I think I heard a hint of maybe some more books in the works. Could you tell me about that? So I've had a couple of people actually ask me to write another book that follows where I am today. Mm. I'm not sure if that's something that I'm definitely going to do, but I'm definitely considering it. Mm. Is there anything you would do differently the second time around? Maybe uh, something you learned along the way since it was your first book? The first book, I was not as transparent as far as certain things or certain people that were involved in the book. Mm. And I do feel as if next time I want to be totally transparent and put everything out there because it's my experience, it's my truth, it's something that I lived. And unfortunately, you know, if it, I don't want to paint a bad picture of anyone, but I have to tell my truth. So what advice would you give to aspiring authors who want to publish their first work? I would definitely say don't give up. There was a time period where I actually stopped writing because I had a death in my family. My brother passed unexpectedly. Oh, I'm sorry. And I took a break. And it was something that, you know, I had to do. But again, I stopped writing. So life happens. And I just feel like I would just say, keep going, even if it takes you over a year or two years or you pick it up, you know, and put it back down. Just keep going and finish it because there's no greater feeling once you've accomplished a goal that you set out to do. Writing's often a lonely sort of thing, you know, you're just sitting by yourself on the computer typing away for hours and hours. Did you have anyone in your life who was sort of motivating you or encouraging you throughout the way? I would definitely say my parents played a big part in helping me, making sure that I finished it. They played a big part in the editing process. Other family members also encouraged me during the time. I was working, so I had coworkers who knew about the book. They actually walked through some of the experiences with me, and so they were encouraging as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Oftentimes when you're driven to write, you're also an avid reader. Would you call yourself an avid reader? Oh, yes, I love to read. Honestly, I'll read any book. Mm. I'll try it, and, you know, I'll get at least halfway through the book and know if I like it or not. Or it, it, sometimes it may not even take me that long, but I'm open to any any type of book. I'll read anything. I love books. But I'm really more so, I would say, into Christian authors and self-help. I, I have done a lot of that reading mm. as well, more so of the self-help help books than any other thing. Now, when you're writing, do you go to a special kind of place? Do you put on a special kind of music, maybe get a cup of tea? Do you have like a little routine you get into or do you just sort of write as it grabs you? I journal. I've been journaling since I was a little girl. So for me, it was just pretty much natural because I always write in my journal. If not, there were times where I would write every day. And, you know, as life has happened with children and work, I haven't been able to journal every day, but I still journal. So to me, it just... It was pretty much natural. Well, that's wonderful. Well, the book is called The Void You Feel, Only God Can Fill. It's written by Princess James, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this everywhere you get your reading material, on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, iTunes, 
and down the street at your local bookstore, too. Princess, thank you again for joining me here tonight. I had a really nice time talking with you. Thank you again for having me, and I've enjoyed you just as much. This next book has been described as a real page-turner. It's called Bishop Brown, Talent Discovered, and the author Sheridan Wittig is with me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Sheridan, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Oh gosh, it's my pleasure. Can you tell me what Bishop Brown is all about? So Bishop is just a regular kid, right? And then he finds out he has this talent. It's a supernatural kind of thing, and it rocks his world. So he starts having to figure out how to handle his talent and what talents he has. So it's really kind of an adventure book, and and it's just how he figures everything out. Hmm. How did you get the idea for this story? Oh, gosh. I have read, if I didn't have any books to read, I would read the cereal box. I didn't care. I've (laughs) always been a reader. It just was something that sounded like something I would have wanted to read. Hmm. So I wrote it. That's great. I hear that advice a lot. If you're out of ideas, you don't know what to write, then write something that you would want to read. Absolutely. So have you written before? What's your writing background look like? Well, I taught English for a little while. Not that you can tell with this accent. I (laughs) realize. And my grammar's not so awesome. I've always loved writing, but this is my very first actual book. Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's super exciting. Yeah, yeah, it should be. It's a super big deal. I mean, so much work goes into it. How did you feel when you got that first one in your hands, that physical copy that you get after all that hard work? Oh, my gosh. It was amazing. I was looking at it, and I was pretty sure it wasn't real. (laughs) I'm like, this can't really be true. Like, what? But it was just this overwhelming, like, I really did this. And then I reread it, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm kind of funny. (laughs) It was like I'd we've seen it for the first time. Oh, that's amazing. So uh, what sort of audience were you going for here? What kind of readers do you think would really get the most out of this story? Well, it's written to where, you know, kids as young as decent readers, maybe ages 9 and 10 up. But a lot of my adult friends have bought it, and they're just like, oh, my gosh, it's cute. I love this book. Mm. And it's going to be a series. So this is the first of three. Well, that's wonderful. Are you far along then in developing those future books? Yeah, book two is probably about halfway done. And I know what book three will be. I just, you know, haven't started putting the pen to paper, as it were. Hmm. Now, it sounds like when it comes to writing, you're more of a planner, uh, an outliner, as opposed to just sort of writing by the seat of your pants. Am I right? Well, you know, I do a lot of flying by the seat of my pants. I know where I want to go. But the uh, inside parts just kind of happen as I'm thinking about, you know, what would this guy do? What would this person say? Hmm. So I do a little fly by the seat of the pants, but I do definitely have a plan of where it's going and, you know, kind of the end game. Yeah. Leaves a lot of room for exploration and maybe a little bit of change in direction every once in a while. Yes. Yeah. There's going to be, you know, changes in book two and then book three is going to be even more. That's wonderful. Now, did this first one take you a long time to write? Yeah, Hmm. it did. I wrote part of it and put it down and waited, you know, years, picked it back up, wrote part of it, put it down. And then I decided I was looking at it one day and I'm like, you know, there's no point in this just sitting here. Hmm. This is something I really want to do. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to pound the rest of this out. So I basically went back and kind of edited and rewrote big chunks of it. But once I finally sat down to do it, it went very, very quickly. Sheridan's book is titled Bishop Brown, Talent Discovered. Of course, this is book one of a three-book series. And the author, of course, is Sheridan Wittig. It's published by Newman Springs Publishing. And you can find it everywhere that you get your books. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. Well, Sheridan, thank you again for being here. Thank you for your passion for writing. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this series. I had a really nice time talking with you today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, this was great. If you will change your mind, God will change your life. That's what author Takaya Arevalo talks about in her new book, Hello, Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not in Vain. I'm very pleased that Takaya is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Takaya, thank you for joining me tonight. Yes, thank you for having me. Could you tell me what you wrote about with your book, Hello Beautiful, Your Pain Was Not in Vain? 
I wrote about how, you know, everything that I went through, how God used all the pain and all the different heartaches and situations like that. You know, I wrote about how God turned all that into purpose in my life. You know, for so long, I wondered why I went through all the different things in my life, whether it be sexual abuse or depression or, you know, growing up the way that I did. And I talk about how God turned each and every one of those moments into something that was beautiful. Certainly took a lot of courage to write this book. About how long were you working on it? I was working on it about, um, I would say, give or take about six or seven months just due to different things. Because in the middle of writing this book, my mother was going through um, breast cancer. And so throughout the writing process, I was also walking that out with my mother. Was there anything in particular that sort of sparked your inspiration to write this book and tell your story to the world? God, because honestly, I was extremely nervous. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to hurt anyone. And I know a lot of people didn't know my story. And so I was worried about putting my my life story on the line. And so, you know, honestly, it was just that mandate from God telling me that this was something that I needed to do to help other people get free. Hmm. Is this the first time you've written? What's your writing background like? So I've written in the past, however, nothing that I ever published. It was just something that I use as a coping mechanism Mm. or just a way to just kind of escape the hurt. Mm. Well, congratulations on having that first book out there. It's a lot of work, a lot of patience it takes to do this. What did you find most challenging about publishing? For me, the most challenging part was worried about the editing. Because knowing that, you know, I didn't have all the, you know, the punctuations and things like that. And so I was worried about not being able to get that right. However, I was so thankful to find out that there are editors out there. Mm -hmm. And so, but yeah, that was probably the most difficult part for me. Mm. Do you have advice now for aspiring authors who also want to get their first book on shelves? Honestly, I would just tell them to just do it. You know, don't don't think about all the little things, you know, just recognizing that your story needs to be heard and that there's somebody out there that's waiting to get free from whatever they're going through and that your story could be the key that unlocks their freedom. And so I would just tell them to just do it full of faith and just trust God through the process. Oh, that's really great advice. So what's the chances that you're going to write another book, publish some more books? Well, it's a hundred percent chance. Mm. I've already started working on my second one. Oh, that's fantastic. Is it sort of along these lines or are you exploring something else? No, it's a continuation um, of this one just from a different approach, but still, you know, a continuation. And then life has happened more so even after that one and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's even things that I didn't get to really go into in the first one. And so in the second one, it's going to take the readers even deeper. Mm, That's fantastic. Uh, While you're writing, have you ever got writer's block? Yes, I have. Oh, What do you do when that happens? It's the worst. I just pray because I just, you know, like you you have so much you feel like you could say, but you don't know how to put it on paper or type it out. And so in those moments, I just kind of pray and just meditate on God and just trusting that at that time, it's just going to start pouring out. Mm. Now, when you're writing, it's often such a lonely job. You're by yourself in front of the computer for so many hours. and, And then taking into account how personal and emotional the content of your book is, It really helps out if you have people in your life who can encourage you, support you, motivate you, know you're taking on this huge project and it's going to be a lot of work. Did you have people in your life like that? Oh, yes. And as much as I wish that I was that person who had that perfect setting to just sit down, I don't. I have three kids. Hmm. And so for me, writing was writing in the car, writing on vacation, writing wherever I could. But just honestly, my husband, he's like, he's just been such a rock, such a pillar in my life. And He just always been there and just, you know, encouraging me and motivating me to just keep going. And then times where he would just watch the kids so I could have a brief moment, but, you know, or in the car telling them to, you know, hey, y'all be quiet so I can write and stuff like that. And honestly, just my husband, he he tremendously has been such a blessing to me throughout this process. Hmm. Do you have any final words of encouragement for our listeners, you know, for people who might be struggling? I would honestly just tell them to just trust God. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways, and he's going to guide your path. And just knowing that your path may not look like everybody else's path, and your path to healing may not look like everyone else's, but if you would just trust God and you would just keep walking, keep being faithful in wherever he has you, no matter what's going on right now, just trust him, and God is going to bring you through it because God is so faithful and he's trustworthy and he's reliable. And so just knowing that your pain is going to be turned into something beautiful, something magnificent. So just keep trusting him. That's honestly what I'd say. Mm, Thank you for those words of encouragement, Takaya. Takaya's book is called Hello, Beautiful. Your Pain Was Not in Vain, 
of course written by Takaya Arevalo and published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find it everywhere that you buy books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. Takaya, thank you for coming on the show here with me. Thank you for having the courage to tell your story and, I'm sure, change a lot of lives out there. I had a really fantastic time talking with you. Thank you so much. Beyond the Ashes is the new novel in stores now by Tanya Finley. Tanya's joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Tanya, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me what readers will find in Beyond the Ashes? Well, it's a story of a girl who experiences a tragedy that involves some shame, and she thinks that she can run from it, as many of us do think we can run from the things that we, that we would like to hide, and eventually it comes back to haunt her, really. But in the process, she also has to come to grips with the idea that God loves her, despite how she feels about herself. So it's really a love story. It's a love story between a man and a woman, but it's also a love story between a woman and God. Sounds like a fantastic message. So how did the idea for this story come about? All my life, I've really, I've noticed there's a lot of heartache that, you know, I've experienced in my life and other people experience in their own lives, especially young women that deal with a lot of shame. Mm. And a lot of feeling as though the things that happen to them and the choices that they make, the mistakes that they make, really define who they are. And God laid it on my heart to write a book about how that shame does not define us. God's love defines us. Hmm. And so I had that heart and um, I just went from there and, and here we are. <laughs> Have you written a book before or is this your first one? I've written manuscripts before, but nothing that's been published. But I am continuing to write. So I have other books in the works right now. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations on getting number Thank one out you. there. It's a huge deal. I mean, the publishing thing is a lot of work and a lot of patience. Did it take you a long time to write this? It took me about six months to write it, but really a year to polish it. Hmm. What was the most challenging part of publishing it? Hmm. I would say probably the editing part of it mm -hmm. and a lot of throughout it a lot of prayer and second guessing and like lord is this really what you want me to do is this how you want this to play out and there's a lot of waiting and a lot of questions i guess but he was faithful <laughs> he always is so do you have any advice now for aspiring authors who haven't published a book yet either but are looking to do what you just did keep writing <laughs> mm. And don't allow anybody to, if, if you are doing what the Lord wants you to do, do not let anyone dissuade you, no matter what they have to say. Because if this is what God wants you to do, he will make a way. That's great advice. So you mentioned some other things in the works. Now, are these a continuation of Beyond the Ashes or are you going somewhere else? So I've almost finished a manuscript that's sort of a singleton. It's on its own. It's not related to Beyond the Ashes, but I do also have a second book in the works that I'm, I'm just sort of getting started on that is a second to Beyond the Ashes. Do you ever get writer's block? Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you do when that strikes? I do a lot of praying, and I do a lot of reading God's Word and seeking Him, and um, sometimes you just have to keep writing, you know, keep sort of trying to push yourself, and um, eventually when it's His timing, it, it just falls together. Mm. <laughs> What kind of a reader are you? Because often writers also love to read, so I assume you read a lot. Yes. I love a lot of romance fiction, Christian romance fiction. I read a lot of Rachel Hawk. You know, I've read some Karen Kingsbury, Jeanette Oakey. I love historical fiction as well. Hmm. And when I first started writing, I actually started with fantasy because I started when I was in high school. I knew I wanted to be an author, so... <laughs> That was my starting place was Christian fantasy. Wow, that's fantastic. So you've had this aspiration of writing for a while and publishing for a while now. So what was that feeling like? What was going through your head whenever you got that first physical copy in your hands after working on this for so long? It was amazing. It was mm. kind of surreal. It was like everything that I had worked for for so long kind of came together. It just led me to praise the Lord because... Mm. Without him, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> mm, absolutely. When you write, do you have a special time or place or, or something that you need, like some music when you write? Or do you just sort of write as the inspiration hits you? 
Well, I have two children at home and I have, I'm pregnant with a third. So oh, I wow. have to block out some time where I can write. And so I'll block out time during the day. And I really love listening to particularly things like piano guys and stuff like that. Mm. When I write, that's just what I've always been drawn towards. Well, the book is called Beyond the Ashes, written by Tanya Finley, and it's published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can buy this everywhere you pick up your reading material on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. Well, Tanya, thank you again for joining me. Thank you for all the hard work that you put into getting this book out there. I encourage our listeners to pick this up. I had a really nice time chatting with you tonight. Uh, it was wonderful chatting with you, too. Thank you. This next book is an adventure for everyone. It's titled Tales of a Young Rider, and the author, Patrice Engel Spierka, is sitting here with me now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Patrice, thank you very much for being here with me tonight. I am so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm very excited to be talking with you. Can you tell me about Tales of a Young Rider? What can readers expect? Well, it is a book about a girl's adventures growing up in the mountains of Colorado, and it's largely based, almost entirely based, on my own experiences. Mm. My father was the director of YMCA the Rockies Snow Mountain Ranch, which is a 5,000-acre-plus resort and conference center located in Winter Park, Colorado, at 9,000 feet in those beautiful mountains. So I definitely had an incredible childhood. Wow. Sure sounds like it. Is the book one long story or is it a series of short stories? No, it's individual chapters. So it's easy to pick up and put down and read to your kids at any point. They're just short stories. The story really centers around a historic ranch that was developed into the YMCA property. Mm -hmm. And the original homesteaders there were Rudy and Clarabelle Just. It was just like stepping back into time. Mm. Leah, the character, main character in the book, had her horses there. And she would go to get her horses <laughs> and stop at the ranch house to visit with Rudy and Clarabelle. And there were several outbuildings on the property, a chicken coop, sheep barn, horse barn, shop, and a grain barn. And they raised all kinds of livestock there. So she would sit and listen to their stories around their wood cook stove, <laughs> like stepping back into time. Wow. And she just learned a lot from them. So it was those stories that started her adventures. What's it like working with an illustrator and taking your words and communicating that visually so that everything sort of lines up with your vision? Well, I'm glad you asked that. My illustrator happened to be my 16-year-old daughter. Wow. I was going a totally different path and working to try to get an illustrator and trying to look for the best fit. I wanted watercolor and it just wasn't working out just for whatever reason. And my 16-year-old at the time said, you should do digital art. The kids love the bright colors. And so I said, okay, well, let's see what you think what your ideas are. Mm -hmm. So she did the cover and I was blown away. Wow. The mountains look like the mountains there. Just the feeling that you get from it. Her artwork is just amazing. I feel like they're, they're almost 3D. You can kind of step into the pictures and I love it. I'm so happy that she talked me into the digital art. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wonderful that you're pulling in the talents of some of your loved ones and, and making this truly almost a family effort. It is really special. It really is. My other daughter, older daughter, she helps me with the social media posts and getting the word out. So it's really a fun family experience. Now, after working on the book for so long and putting so many hours into it, getting that first physical copy in your hands, uh, when you get that first one after just looking at the computer screen for so long, what was going through your mind? What were you feeling? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Getting that book, opening up, my father, my daughter, she filmed it for me because it was just like the moment of lifting that book up out of the packaging was incredible. I was crying. It was just like this incredible feeling of elation, and I just hugged it. Wow. It felt like, <laughs> it felt like my baby, mm -hmm. and I just hugged it. And I truly love the book. I just love it. Well, it sounds like it truly has a great message. It's called Tales of a Young Rider, written by Patrice Engel Spierka, 
and is published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this everywhere you get your books. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. Well, Patrice, thank you again for coming on the show. I had a really nice time talking with you tonight. Thank you so much for having me. When you're going through struggles and facing challenges that seem impossible, it's comforting to know that you're not alone and that there's hope. And that's what author J.P. Martell offers in her new book, Five Years and a Million Tears. J.P. is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. J.P., thank you for joining me tonight. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Can you tell me what Five Years and a Million Tears is all about? Well, the book is basically about a young woman's struggle with infertility. It delves into how it affects her at every level, emotionally, physically, spiritually, as well as the impact that it has on those who are dearest to her. She engages in a battle for control with her maker, as do, I think, many who go through difficult situations. And it doesn't go very well. She's also forced to reevaluate her priorities and do some deep soul searching while she attempts to find answers to her dilemma. Hmm. Was there anything in particular that inspired you to write the story? Where did the idea for it come from? Well, I had a personal experience. Mm -hmm. I had a personal journey that took five years with infertility, hence the title of the book. Mm -hmm. For me, it also was that I wanted to, I met so many people while I was on that path that were going through the same difficulties, and I wanted to honor them, predominantly the women, but also to acknowledge and respect their partners who walked right alongside them during this difficult time. That's basically how it came to be. I'd been wanting to put it to paper for a long time, but I felt that in order to do so, I'd have to go to a very difficult, emotional, painful place. Mm. And I didn't want to do that. And then um, the decision was made for me because I had a medical situation. So I found myself there. And I thought, well, since I'm here, I might as well put this to uh, positive use. Mm. And I, I found the, the entire experience of, of writing about it to be very cathartic. It was a cathartic experience. But that's basically how it came to be. I, I really felt that there are so many people out there who go through a, a similar struggle, and I don't think anyone else can really appreciate what they're going through, just like probably you know someone who hasn't had cancer can't appreciate that journey. Mm. And I just wanted them to know that they're not alone, that what they're feeling is not just them, and that there are ways that they can reach out to other people and there are ways to find solutions. What are the chances that you're going to write more and maybe get more published? Well, I had, in fact, written another novel. I had written that novel, not published it, but written it prior to this one. But this was the one that uh, was closer to my heart and I wanted to get this out. So I'm in the process now of uh, editing the other. It's totally unlike this. It's uh, another fiction novel, but not anything that I know anything about. Uh, it's a love story of sorts and has a little drama, a little uh, comedy, a, a little bit of everything. Hmm. The book is called Five Years and a Million Tears, written by J.P. Martell. It's published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this everywhere you shop for your books, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores. JP, thank you again for joining me tonight. I had a really nice time chatting with you. Thank you so much. I did, too. It's been a pleasure. The seemingly opposing concepts of love and anger are explored in the new book by Tony Cross, titled, Is God Angry? A Perspective Through Moses. I'm really happy that Tony is joining me here right now at the Reader House Author Roundtable. Tony, thank you for being here with me tonight. Certainly. Happy to be here. Can you tell me all about what you're getting at in Is God Angry? I think it's a common question that even if people aren't willing to voice, they often deeply think about it. Apparently, when you read Old Testament scripture, it has this connotation that paints God as a kind of a harsh, angry, punishing type of God. And it's very confusing for folks, especially when you read in the New Testament about Jesus, who says that he is God. You've seen me, you've seen the Father, and I am the Father of one. 
And he also said, I came that you may know the Father. Mm. So when you read about Jesus's compassionate, loving, forgiving nature, and then you compare it with what's written about God in the Old Testament, it leaves a very confusing concept of who God is. And it says a perspective through Moses. So what does that lens look like? Well, Moses, because he was the one that wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, and much of the Old Testament belief systems that were built for the Israelites were based upon the writings of Moses. So the way Moses viewed God and perceived him to be and wrote about God would have a huge impact on the way Scripture was interpreted in that time. Hmm. Was there something in particular that inspired you or, or sparked you? to say, hey, I need to write this book and get this out to the world? <laughs> yeah, I, it was uh, growing up in a religious background. I know that a lot of the churches that existed in the time period were evangelical in nature. And so their goal was to try to reach as many as possible to be saved. Unfortunately, modern society kind of refers to them as Bible thumpers. Mm. And not to say that Bible is not good. It's, it's our source of truth. It's the way we apply how we see God. So if you believe that God is an angry, punishing God that's just sitting around waiting for us to screw up, you teach people that idea, they're going to run from that kind of a God. Mm. They're not going to have any part to do with it. Mm. So I had to overcome a lot of my own misconceptions about who God is as a father. And the, the understanding that God revealed to me as I went through the study kind of helped set me free from that, that idealism. Mm. Did this take you a long time to write? The project's been in work 27 years. So oh, wow. Now, when it came to editing and, and going through the publishing stages of it, was that challenging at all? It was. I'm the guy that in high school and never believed that English was really going to be necessary for life. <laughs> and so I never really studied English very much. And so the grammar aspect was, was a, a difficult task for me. I wouldn't consider myself to be an author. I'm just... I, just moved by passion to write about something that uh, was very instrumental in healing me from a lot of the wounds I suffered from as a child. So is this your first published book then? It is. Congratulations. That's no small feat. There's a lot of work and a lot of patience involved. Do you have any advice now for people that want to get their first one out there too? Uh, you have to persevere. You got to believe in what you're promoting. It is not an easy process. It's not a long process. And I, don't, I wouldn't recommend writing just for the sake of being an author. Mm. I think that whatever material that you write about needs to be something that appeals to the human soul. I know you said you never set out to be an author, but do you have plans on more? I do. Um, in the process of a lot of the work that was associated with this first book, there were two other books that I've written. They're in very rough manuscript form, and so there's still a lot of work yet ahead to present it in a more of a reading manuscript. Mm. How much planning and sort of outlining do you go through in this? Do you try to outline the whole thing from beginning to end and then just fill it in from there, or are there sections or, or parts of it where you just sort of write and let the ideas come to you? That's a good question. <laughs> in this particular one, I just sat down and just started writing the thoughts that moved the questions. Mm. The questions were already there, the questions that I that were raised in you know through childhood about who is God, who are we? Does he see us with favor? Is he angry at us? Uh, how can some of these difficult scripture passages line up when they seem to be so contradictory? In the quest to answer those questions, that's what resulted in the flow of information. And then as you make multiple passes, reading it and revising it to where it, it actually flows together and communicates the ideas in a, in a thought process without being disjointed, it, that's more the clinical processing time that it takes to construct this particular work anyway. The book is called, Is God Angry? A Perspective Through Moses. It's written by Tony Cross and published by Christian Faith Publishing. You can find this everywhere that you get your books on Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, on iTunes, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores, too. Tony, thank you again for writing this very important work. I really had a good time talking with you today. Well, thank you for taking the time. It's been my pleasure. We hope you enjoyed this edition of the Reader House Author Roundtable, where authors from all walks of life come together to discuss the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of publishing their books. We hope to see you back here every Friday night at 8 p.m. 
or listen anytime via podcast at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, and PodServe, to name just a few. The Author Roundtable is sponsored by Reader House Online Bookstore, where independent new authors come first.